I know that one thing that most of you struggle with when it comes to creating videos with your drone, with your camera, with your phone or whatever is editing. Like trying to put everything together to make it a project that you can present and be proud of. Like for five years, many of you have told me that's the worst part of this, this whole hobby. So what I wanna to do today is I'm gonna take a half hour, I'm gonna walk through my favorite park here, the Scandinavian Heritage Park. If you've been with the channel at all, you know I come here quite often. And I'm just gonna capture some footage of the highlights of the park and I'm gonna capture some drone footage as well. You guys, one thing I want you to get from this video, drone footage should not be the, the primary focus of your videos, okay? Drone footage is meant to supplement and complement your videos and your projects, okay? Just keep that in mind. Nobody wants to watch a, a five minute video of aerial footage. Like, yes, it's nice, but it should just be a part of the story. You have to tell a story. So what I wanna show you is how I'm gonna tell a story about this park. I'm gonna capture um, you know, some of the statues and some of the buildings and things like that. And then I'll do a voiceover, I'll add the drone footage, and I'm gonna use a free editing program called CapCut. You may have heard of CapCut. Um, most people use CapCut for their TikToks or their Instagram Reels or whatever, but they have a desktop app as well. So I wanna show you that, and I wanna show you how easy it is to make a video. Sounds like I'm not gonna be flying here for a little bit. There is a helicopter in the area, so <laughs> let's go ahead and just gather some footage on the ground here, and then I'll get the drone up, and we'll show you how to do this. For the ground-based footage today, I just used my four-year-old iPhone and a new phone gimbal from Insta360 called The Flow. You don't really need a whole lot of expensive gear to create things. I know you hear that quite often from YouTubers, but then you see us trying to convince you to buy all the latest and greatest gear, right? It's kind of ironic, I know, but it really is true. If you have a smartphone, you can create something. Now the gimbal helps to make it more steady and smooth and the drone adds another element that brings everything up to another level. <laughs> See what I did there? So I captured everything in portrait mode because this is a project that maybe I would show to like the visitor center and they might wanna use it in their social media like Facebook or Instagram or something. The drone shots I shot in landscape because I used my Mavic 3 Pro but I shot everything kind of wide so I can crop it into nine by 16. I shot each scene multiple times using different movements I really wish I used an ND filter on my drone because it was super bright today and the footage does not look as good as it could have. Altogether, it took me about 40 minutes to gather all of this footage. Most of you love to fly drones and most of you love to capture things and see things from above and then everything that you've done just stays on the card or it stays in your drone or even stays on your computer if you've even made it that far, right? So I want this video to encourage and motivate those of you who just are afraid of it because CapCut, the desktop version of CapCut, I think is, is the program that's gonna bring you over the edge and get you editing your footage, all right? There's two reasons that I wanna recommend CapCut to you guys. Number one, it's free. It's absolutely free and it is very, very powerful. That's the second reason. There's so, there's so much functionality to it that I don't even understand why it's free. Like you can get the pro version, like you can sign up for pro, but honestly, the features that are in the pro version, you really don't need, especially as a beginner. So download CapCut. This is what it looks like right here on my screen. When you open it, you don't have to sign in. You don't have to join pro. Um, you just start using it. And I'll just show you here in a second why I think it's so great. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure you got that footage off of your SD cards. Okay, take it out of your drone, stick it into your computer and download it, put it into a folder. All right, and then remember where you put it. So, so we're gonna click on new project right here, just click on this plus. Now this is just a basic overview of CapCut. This is just to kind of introduce you to it. Um, I, if you guys are interested, if this video does well and you guys you know, hit that like button, if I get a lot of subscribers out of this video, I'll make more tutorials on how to dive deeper into it because there's so much to learn about this program, all right? So if the interest is there, I will do more videos, but I just wanted to show you something to get you started. So right here is your import. This is your media uh, panel right here. This is where all your videos are gonna go, your audio, your photos, everything that you're gonna use. Basically, this is your ingredients for your project are gonna sit in this panel. This next panel is called the player. So anytime you click on anything in the media panel, it's gonna play in the player panel. So you can preview it. Over here in the details panel, we're gonna show you that in just a second because this changes as you edit things, as you use it. And then down here in the bottom, this is called your timeline. This is where you're gonna do all of the magic. This is where you mix up your recipe. Okay, you put your ingredients into the timeline, you cut it up, 
and you make it the way that you want it to be right there in the timeline. So that's an overview of the user interface. We're gonna go ahead and import those clips that I just captured, the drone footage, as well as the footage with my phone and the Insta360 Flow uh, Stabilizer Gimbal. So we're gonna click on the plus there. Right here is two folders. I got my drone footage and my phone footage. We're gonna import that. So that brought those two folders into the media plan panel. And then if we go ahead and just click on that, double click on it, there's my files. Okay, that's the drone footage. Let's go back to all. And then there's the ground-based footage. Like I said, we're gonna do a portrait video here. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, a portrait style video because I want this to be available to be used for maybe marketing purposes, okay? It's probably not going to be. This is just to show you guys how to do it, okay? So this is gonna be the base video stuff. You know, like I said, the drone footage is just extra stuff. But let's just go ahead and click on this first file right here, this first video file. And then what happens is as soon as you click on it, CapCut will start playing it over here in the player. So you can see what it's gonna look like. You can get an idea of what, you know, what you recorded. Now you'll see up here, if you look right there, I recorded a minute 18 of footage. Well, I only need about four or five seconds from each of these clips. Some of them is gonna be a little bit more, but what you can do to cut this clip up, there's, there's a number of ways to do it. The best way I think is to edit them right up here in the media panel. You're just gonna grab the left hand side and you're gonna scroll to where you want it to start. You're gonna grab the right hand side and use your left click, uh, left button on your mouse, hold it down and drag it over to where you want it to finish. So let's say about right there. So now you'll see we have this very slim clip right here. And I'm gonna add this to the timeline by clicking on this little plus right here. It says add to track. That drops it down into the timeline. So you can see there I got about a six, let's see, yeah, about a six second video. I'm just gonna trim that down a little bit and how you trim this down, you're gonna go over here to the right hand side and you can just slide this to make it whatever length you want it to be. So let's say I only want five seconds, so I'm gonna scroll down to five seconds right there. Okay, now let's go ahead and hit the play button. Okay, there's a nice slow pan of the Gustav Church. All right, let's do the second clip. So I'm just gonna click on it. It's gonna start playing it. So here we have some of the flags that are in the park. And you know, this is a 29 second video, but again, I only want like five seconds. So I'm gonna scroll ahead. I'm gonna grab that left hand side and let's start about right there. I'm gonna get the right hand side and we're gonna get the windmill in there a little bit. So that looks pretty good. We're gonna hit the plus and that's gonna drop it down into the timeline. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play. Okay, maybe a little bit longer, so I'm just gonna drag that over, okay? Now, you can hear the audio playing. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but you know, there was audio captured with this clip. I don't wanna hear that audio because I'm gonna add some music to this. I'm gonna add some voiceover. So you're gonna to wanna to mute this track. This is a track. You're gonna to wanna to mute it. You don't wanna hear any of these sounds from this. So right over here on the left-hand side, you're gonna click on mute clip, all right? Now you don't have to worry about that with your drone footage because your drones don't capture audio, but for any of your footage you capture with your phone or with your camera, there's probably gonna be audio there. So you're gonna to wanna to mute that. Um, if you're gonna do what I'm doing with this project, of course, if you wanna hear the audio, you wouldn't mute it, but um, so there's two clips. Let's just do one more. Let's go ahead and throw in this third clip. I think this is the windmill. And now this one, this time I'm gonna show you how you can edit it right in the timeline. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab it with your left mouse button and you're gonna just drop it into the timeline. So there we have the whole entire clip. So there's all uh, 42 seconds of it. Okay, we don't want that. Um, now I can't see the end of it here. So to see the end of it, you see this minus and this plus right here. This is how we make the timeline bigger or smaller. So we wanna fit it on the screen. So we're gonna make it smaller. All right, so now let's scroll ahead to the portion of the video that I want to see. So we're gonna scroll ahead to about right before we see the windmill, okay, right before it comes into the frame. And, and then what we're gonna do is right over here on the left-hand side, we're gonna to switch to the blade button or the split button. B is, I say blade, I don't know if that's what it is, but that's the split. It looks like a little razor blade, okay? And we're gonna cut it right there. And we're gonna get rid of this part right here. We don't want that. So I'm gonna right click on the right button on my mouse and then um, delete. And then what that's gonna do, it's gonna pull the rest of it over and bump it up against that second clip. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and play. And we're gonna let it play until it gets to the top of the windmill. Very good. Now I could either cut it again right there 
or which is a little bit faster, if you're just using the select button, you can just drag it over, right? So you grab a hold of that right-hand side, drag it over, okay? So that's how you manipulate your clips and edit them to show only the parts that you want to show. You know, most of the time, especially when you're doing drone footage, you hit record and you might have, you might have a 20 minute video that you need to cut up into pieces. That's how you cut it up into pieces, okay? And like I said, with CapCut, super easy. You can do it up here in the media panel or down here in the timeline. So, so now what I normally, what I'm gonna do here after I'm done recording the video for you guys is I'm gonna make a complete video. I'm gonna do that with all of these clips. I'm gonna add my drone footage, which I'll show you right now how I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna click on all. I'm gonna open up the folder that has all the drone footage. And let's see, which one should we look at here? Not that one. What's this? Oops, oops, uh, I guess we're gonna use that one. I clicked on the plus and that threw it down into the timeline, okay? So I don't want two minutes and 12 seconds of it. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so I see the whole thing. And let's just go ahead and scroll. Oh, it looks like I added two of them. Okay, let's get rid of this one. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm going to delete. And that's gonna get rid of it. All right, so let's take a look at this clip that I uploaded here and that's going right at the church. So let's start about right here at the windmill. Okay, let's grab the left-hand side of it. Okay, now look at, see how that pulls the whole clip over, all the three clips, let go, and it's gonna snap back into the front of it, okay? So, and then I wanna get just a little bit of that. So now I'm gonna drag it from the right-hand side. Now, as you can see, this is a horizontal clip, right? Because I captured it with my Mavic 3 Pro. We want this to be a vertical clip. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on it. It's highlighted over here on this far right panel. This is where we're gonna adjust the size and many other things. So for now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom all the way up until we get rid of these lines right here. And as soon as those lines are gone, we know it's gonna fill the frame, okay? So we're at 341%. Now let's go ahead and just watch it. Hit the play button and it scrolls into the church right there, okay? so. That's a great look. It's uh, it's not gonna be ideal. What would be ideal is if I used my Mini 3 Pro and I captured it vertically, you know, in portrait mode, but I can't do that with the Mavic 3 Pro, so I have to zoom in to get the frame that I want, okay? So that's just uh, showing you how to cut a horizontal clip and, and zoom it into a, um, into a vertical clip. Okay, so I got my clips in here, right? Next thing I'm gonna do is add some transitions. I know people like transitions. Uh, I like jump cuts. I like to just go from one to the next. But if you want to make some type of different mood, um, there's so many transitions. You guys look up here in the upper left hand corner. I want to show you all the things that CapCut has. Audio. It has songs already installed. Like all of these songs are in the program. Like they're just endless number of songs that you can use. Um, here's where you add text, stickers, more stickers than you'll ever need. You can add certain effects to your videos. So let's just throw on, um, let's do, do smart sharpen right here, okay? That looks awful. I would never use that, but go ahead and delete it. But you can just drag uh, these effects onto your clips and give them whatever look you want them to have. Transitions right here. This is what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna use this mix transition. I'm gonna grab it with the left button on my mouse. I'm gonna drop it right over the, the two clips right there, okay, where they meet. I'm gonna do that to the next one. I'm gonna do that to the next one and so on. So let's take a look and see what that transition looks like. We're gonna hit the play and basically it's a quick fade. It just fades out from one and into the other. It's a very nice smooth transition, right? Looks really, really good. So, and right here at the top, it shows you a bunch of trending transitions. This is transitions that are people are using on a regular basis, but also if you scroll down, I mean, look at all these. Like, I can't believe it. And then filters, you can add certain filters to your videos if you want. So let's just throw this one on here and see what it looks like. <laughs> that looks terrible. But hey, maybe if you're making a music video and you want to have that look, what the heck, it might be great for you. So we're going to undo. You can undo anything that you do in video editing uh, just by doing the undo button. And I use that a lot, trust me. So, But just look at all that functionality, you guys, all the different things that you can do. Now, you can also do adjustment layers. Basically, an adjustment layer allows you to change everything um, on a on a video. Like, I'll just show you real quick here. Click on adjustment, custom adjustment, okay? And that's going to drop it right down here on top of all the videos. We're going to stretch it out. And then we're going to 
go over to the right hand side this is where you can do all your color adjustments right here we can make it warmer we can make it cooler all right we can change the hue of it we can change saturation down all the way to black and white all the way up to oversaturated you can add LUTs in here so if you have LUTs downloaded to your computer you can add them right here and that'll change the overall look uh, I'm not going to go into what LUTs are right now this is where you adjust the contrast the highlights the shadows everything right here okay so all of your color grading and things like that can be done I'm not going to do that with this video I'm just going to leave this video as it is okay um, next we want to do we want to add some music so let's go to audio like I said so many different songs here uh, let's just choose this first one piece I'm gonna throw it down on there I'm gonna hit play not bad but it's too loud right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on it over here on the right hand side I'm gonna turn that volume down we're gonna go to about a minus 20 okay that's just gonna give us a nice soft background music pretty good and then finally what I'm gonna do oh we probably should cut it because the song is longer than the video right so we want to get rid of that extra audio so we're gonna hit the B or the blade and we're gonna cut it right there we're gonna right click delete and there the music matches up to the to the video okay last thing we're gonna do we're gonna do a voiceover and to do that you're gonna click on this little microphone right here that's gonna bring up your record panel when you're ready to record if you have your script you're gonna read your script while you are recording or if you're just gonna speak off the cuff whatever hit the record button and that's gonna move the playhead along so it's gonna play the video and as the video is playing it's laying down your voiceover you know on top of it okay in this case below it that voiceover is gonna drop on the bottom of the music so but that's how you craft the voiceover over the top of the rest of the stuff so once it's all done you're gonna to go to file export right there okay and that's going to export it however you want you can change the um, the resolution so 1080p uh, the bit rate just leave it recommended you're going to choose the folder and then you're going to hit export okay so i'm going to complete this video right now and then i'm going to export it i'll put it at the very end so you guys can see what it looks like to see the completed project but I know that was super fast and I know it was very basic but it's something to get you started it's something to maybe pique your interest in CapCut and if you are if your interest is peaked and you want to learn more about it hit that like button to let me know that the video is good for you that it gave you some value subscribe if you're not subscribed because that tells me that hey people came here to see this they want to see more all right and follow me on social media because it's that's where I have fun over there so Instagram TikTok, and uh, and Twitter so let me know if you have questions, you guys. I know editing can be very, very intimidating, especially for people that have never done it before. CapCut's going to make it so much more easy for you. So anyway, I want to thank you for watching today. Have a great day. And as always, fly safe and fly smart. The Scandinavian Heritage Park in Minot, North Dakota is a lasting legacy to preserve the rich history of the people that settled here. The park hosts a variety of unique structures that commemorate some of the most notable landmarks of our forebears' homeland. From the Danish windmill to the Galstav Church Museum, visitors can experience a taste of what our ancestors enjoyed in their homeland. The 30-foot Swedish dollar horse stands guard over the park and brings smiles to children and adults alike. People from all around the world visit the park every year, especially during North America's largest Scandinavian festival, the Norsk Hustfest. The buildings on site are constructed with incredible detail, including the Sigdal House, which was built to museum standards and displays a true representation of a typical house of old-time Norway. The grounds are often used for events, family gatherings, weddings and picnics, and community information and gifts can be found on the visitor center. The park is a true remembrance of the past and a legacy for the future.